Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. So pumped to be talking about the Golden Codes. We have Sandy Hart joining us on the show. Thank you so much for having me. So, so, so honored to be here. I'm so pumped for this. Yeah. Honored to have you as a guest. Thank you. You've been transforming the consciousness of so many humans, including myself, that have been attending your events. For those that don't know Sandy's background, she's the founder of Golden Codes, which is a multi-dimensional healing and ascension technology. You can find the link in the bio to goldencodes.love as well as her Instagram profile. Sandy, what are your thoughts on the direction of our world? <laughs> well, <sighs> Okay, do you want my honest answer? Do you want the public answer? Like, which way are we gonna go the here? The most raw, unfiltered answer possible. Okay, 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 all right, all right, all right. Oh, so, sorry, so just, just have to make sure. Okay, so, um, well, there's a few different timelines that can be playing out because there is no definite timeline that is for sure, no matter what prophecy that has been prophesized. Depending on, um, collective consciousness karma that is still playing out and still being decided to this day of what is going to be happening. Um, what is happening right now and the tra trajectory, what it looks like, is that the earth is splitting into two dimensions, the new earth and the old earth. This is something a lot of the new and now agers are constantly yakking about, but yes, it's actually true. So the new earth is it's a higher frequency. It's uh, the 5D and up frequency. It's the love frequency. It's the oneness frequency. It's what all the um, star beings under the law of one are coming here to help raise, right? And um, the other side of that equation is the old patriarchal energies, a lot of the dark age frequencies that are still playing themselves out. And there's a lot of higher powers that be from very advanced star systems that are keeping it that way because it is an energy source for them. So what is gonna happen? Well, there's going to be, um, and is right now, there's a lot of people waking up really fast. There's a lot of abilities that are just coming online. There's a lot more ayahuasca ceremonies, San Pedro ceremonies, peyote ceremonies, and fungi ceremonies, and a lot of psychic abilities are turning on. Why? because there are more lighthouses, light workers needed to be anchors, to raise the vibration and frequency for this new earth to be um, a, a larger station. So for instance, if, um, if my station, my radio station frequency is um, something really beautiful and high, the more viewers that I have subscribing to that frequency, the higher the frequency of the planet becomes. So that's the whole purpose of populating positive frequency. And it's the same for the other frequencies. They're trying to populate their frequency to attain a certain result. Rather it's control and um, it's really control and, and to have, um, and it's from fear. And then there's love, and then there's surrender and connection and community. So there's these different radio station frequencies that everyone's subscribing to. And so a lot of people are choosing different things to subscribe to. So what happens is that there's going to be a lot of shifts on this planet. There's going to be a lot of interesting, the earth is going to start shaking off a lot of her fleas. Let's just mm. say that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying humans are fleas, but that's kind of, it, it happens that way. Like, oh, a little earthquake, whoops, a little forest fire over here, whoop. Yeah, super easy. Oh, a super volcano, whoop, possibly. I'm not, I'm not an apocalyptic um, uh, necessary, I, 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 I don't really jump into apocalyptic stories that much, but there will be some things shaking and moving. And those who decide to live through their heart and not live in fear. And those who are living in community and, and through selfless service, um, 
they will step into that higher frequency and vibration and um, it is my belief that they'll be looked out looked out after and they're going to live in harmony and peace within and that earth the new earth is something that happens inside of us it's not a destination that frequency and vibration that that dimension is within and same for the others and the, and the more that amplifies out that changes our outer reality as well so that 3d reality that we're so um, trapped by and constricted by is matching what our inner reality is so yeah all right so many things from there let's start with how in this long deep time perspective of the evolution of the planet yeah that there have always been humans that have been that we've always been we've always been coming through from source through humans yeah. to play yes all different types of from all different places have been coming through yes. to play and that there's been some sort of a goodness and a and a malevolence kind of at play and each have a tuning fork yeah. and subscription models exactly okay and now, compared to previous times, yeah. there are eight billion collectively at yeah. the same time, which is like, it's like a peak point in terms of population that hasn't been this high before. It's going down. And then there's also the democratization of exponential technologies that yeah. are making it easier for malevolent actors or even for creative people to, um, to empower themselves. So, right. okay, so then we have to win this wisdom race of this, of the, the good and bad with the democratized exponential technologies. Yeah. And so w there's, there's more and more coming to play to ensure that that, that future traje trajectory scape yeah. that you illustrated yeah. has all of the possibilities. Yeah. And then we're, every moment the collective consciousness is collapsing which direction that we want to move. So it's not like guaranteed that like the Tao is like for sure gonna end up here. There is no guarantee. There, there is no guarantee. There's a lot, you know, the, the way to read timelines and make predictions is based off of the weather, energetic weather. So they're like, well, based off of the trajectory of this and the past, however many things that have happened in the past, this is the tra trajectory. And it is a possible timeline. Maybe it's a very strong one. But we all have free will and there's share, shared realities and then there's your own reality. So that's a lot. So you can't make a real prediction. It doesn't mean that someone who predicts something can't be right. You know, that doesn't mean that, you know, some people are really good at winning that game. Do you feel like you're in constant communication with a higher self that's channeling through your body and making the moves in the... It's the only way. Yeah. It's the only way. What do you, how do you envision that spirit and how do you communicate with that spirit that you're talking It's embodied. About? embodied yeah for for before it wasn't as much embodied and that was something that took a lot of cultivation and um, mm. that took a lot of clearing all sorts of old programs and storylines and timelines that held my human limitations in place and all of my core wounds that were just all tied up in that and you can't be a clear channel when you have core wounds so deeply woven in you because that is for instance, if you're, if you're a crystal and you're like, hi, I'm a channel, and then you still have an abandonment and you have still this and this and this, and then you have God channeling through you, your higher self, your cancel, or your angels, or whatever it is that you work with, then that is channeling through you with the filters of abandonment, attachment, worthiness, mm. whatever it is, lack. So that will always show up. And the more and more you clear, all your timelines that hold all those contractions and distortions in place, the more clear you can be of a channel. And so I've done so much of that. I'm not saying I'm not ascended, I'm not enlightened or anything like that. I'm on my path and I've done a lot of work to the point where um, my channel's really doing beautifully. Yes, okay, so there's um, well, a couple things that I'm gonna get right to sure. that. There is this, the the, it, we work most clearly when we've dealt with all the things that are, in a sense, blocking our, our channel. That we, and, and the subscriptions that we take from birth yeah. 
have a deep root in our both our subconscious programming as well as our you know we we were talking about this example I really like this example about yeah. how you can then you can almost hear music that doesn't serve you anymore yes. playing and then you just you just no longer subscribe to it. So you've canceled that subscription, and then you maybe listen to music that elevates you more, that gets you closer to feeling all that is, opening your heart, that type of stuff. And so I want you, you have an insane journey. So tell us about how you worked, about your journey and how you worked on clearing the things you needed. Yeah unsubscribed yeah. and then subscribe to the new things that have given you the golden code. Oh, the absolutely. Day. Okay. So I came from New York. I, I had a big party um, background. Um, I had, I had maybe like had 30 different careers. I was a professional chef. I was a professional makeup artist, professional jewelry designer, professional singer. And then I was, you know, like I tried all the things that would, didn't, the shoe didn't really fit as deeply to my heart as I would have loved. So I was in a lot of searching mode and I was a makeup artist at the time and I was a socialite, friends with every demographic of humanity you could ever imagine, anywhere from the punks to the high, high celebrities to the people on the street, all black clubs, all raver clubs, all, you know, just everything, hard rock to reggae scenes. Like I was just like a mutt of frequency. I just was into all of it and I was studying them and I was looking for something, some type of connection. And uh, I dabbled in a lot of cocaine. I dabbled in a lot of drinking and maybe some other, some other uh, so-called medicines as well. And uh, one day I just woke up um, and decided to go raw foodist, like completely raw food, live food. And I got inspired by a girlfriend of mine. She had an amazing story of how pure and clean you could be. And I was like, yeah, I want, I want whatever she's doing. Her eyes are sparkling, her hair is flowing. Everything is just this beautiful iridescent glow that she had to her aura. This is before I could even read auras of any kind, right? So I'm just like, I don't know, it's so obvious. So overnight, I let go of all of the toxic stuff in my life. Anywhere from the clothes, to the shoes, to the makeup, to everything, my New York apartment. Moved to San Francisco, starting seeing flying saucers, started doing ayahuasca ceremonies, started tra- traveling with David Wolf, and um, actually, um, lived with him for a couple of years too and on tour and being part of that community it was so beautiful and so learned so much in my early 20s and um, I learned a lot and so things started turning on around that time because I also met this amazing healer his name was Howard Wills and he was one of those um, he's one of those people that walk in a room and heals like I don't know, a few hundred people with snapping his fingers and then people with cancer are gone and, and all sorts of like glycoma is gone, just all sorts of diseases just vanish and he could also make your armpits smell like roses. He did that to me even on the phone once, it was really rad. So you could see that like I was like, wow, that is so cool. Like uh, miracles, that's where it's at. So <laughs> I got really inspired and I got, I got to know him really well. And, um, and then I got to know other healers and I was really, really curious. And I started a- adapting a lot of the work, um, started reading their prayers, started trying them. And I noticed that whatever was happening, God was flowing through me and mm. there was something in there for me. Mm. I did not know at all the path that I was gonna be on to this day, but so after going through a few different lifetimes from then, I've been really building an amazing Rolodex of different um, shamanic healers, multidimensional avatars and celestial priestesses and so on and so forth. Pretty much healers and psychics, right? So I got all these healers and psychics. I'm pulling out core wounds. I'm getting rid of my mommy issues. Once I cleared my mommy issues, I had so much money come in my life. That was like my abundance block. And then there's the sensuality block. And then there's my daddy issues. And there's this past life issue from this thing. All the things that I used to just like freak out about. And I used to have anxiety. I used to have to pop pills just to stay calm. I I had a lot of emotional, my mom, you know, my mom 
she was pretty troubled growing up as well. So I just, I was around that a lot. So I was very flustered. And I, I cleaned that up just by clearing my past lifetimes and my inner child, my child wounding. So when that was cleaned up, I was like, wow, this stuff really works. And then I got into even more trauma, especially around relationship. And there were some things that were happening to me. And the thing is when I decided that things were happening for me, when you take full responsibility for everything that happens to you, meaning for you, as God moves through you, then you can create your reality. And that is what lit everything up. Everything, everything, everything. And so what happens is I started clearing those wounds and when those disappeared, it felt like trillions of daggers got lifted off of my chest. Worlds and worlds of pain, of old stories, martyrdom templates, a wounding of um, worthiness and ab abandonment and betrayal and deceit and just like all these programs. It's not even the feeling of it. The attracting the same story over and over and over again. People who keep getting cheated on, people who keep getting raped, people who um, keep getting their stuff stolen, people who can't find the way to make abundance. That comes from old past lifetimes or this one and there's a loop there and there's a, there's a wound there that needs to be pulled out from the root. And so when I did that, all my abilities started turning on. Not all of them because there's countless amount, you know, we have like tons of abilities that are just waiting to like flood through everyone. But anyway, a ton of them turned on and when it was on, it was on. So this work, it's not like, um, it's, it's not like, oh yeah, this golden codes is something that I've been uh, curating for so, so many years. I was like, no, when I actually took full responsibility for all of my energy, all of it came on and it was been waiting to turn back on. And all these codes are rightfully all of ours in different ways, different organic signatures. Yeah. Yeah. So we all have an endogenous, beautiful, creative expression to gift the world. But we have to do these processes of clearing in order for that to express itself mo most fully. And 100. you had to do the first like bifurcating moment was the raw food. Yeah. And so that was one. Yeah. And then you you altered your trajectory more towards your full expression of your yes. North Star's potential. And then you had another one with going into healing prep modalities. Yes. And learning from different sources, building this Rolodex. And then you kept going towards it with the clearings and clearings of all sorts. So many of us have it may even be all of us come in with some sort of things to clear. Those are our biggest treasures on the other side of the things that exactly. we have to clear. Exactly. Behind every uh, trigger, behind every distortion, behind every core wound is a treasure. And it's a superpower as well. The thing that you just don't even want to face on the other side is something that you're amazing at. That's why there's so many amazing wounded healers, why there's so many amazing doctors. Like how many neurosurgeons or, or physical practitioners, you know, became that because that's what their issue was. How many sex therapists and tantric healers became tantric healers because they had sexual trauma? So behind a wound is a treasure. And so it's good to go into our wounds. And what's the flip side of that? It's your magical essence just waiting to be found. And Golden Codes helps bring first clear up the stuff and then making room for your essence to grow, for your magical power. Everyone has magical powers and they're all just kind of hidden under the rough a little bit. <laughs> yes. So then that's, that's it. These gems that are in the rough that have, they're almost, uh, they're almost, they almost have kind of like dust slash tar slash stuff caked onto the gems when they're born and that mm -hmm. there's this process of needing to, needing to uh, chip away at the dust and clean off the tar and whatnot. And then that's actually what I'm really excited to talk to Joyce about too, is I am this process of you are that North Star that's embedded that's in that gem and to like to dust it off, clean all the stuff up and then hold it up in the sunlight yeah. for it to fully express itself to the rest of the world. Yeah. So Golden Codes unlocks that kind of process of the dusting right. and tarring That's so right. that it can shine. So 
then how did you pick the different modalities that you were going to incorporate in your Golden Goats process and mm. tell us about what it's like for people to attend? Beautiful. So um, as I was going through my Rolodex and constantly getting healings by all these amazing healers, I wish it could be a lot faster. And I wish it could be a little bit more quantum. And I wish I could have all in one. Don't you wish that you could have your all in one thing? Right? Yeah. It's just... I'm like, wow, it's just like being a kid. Like, I want to be a unicorn and a sparkle kitty and Superman and this and that and that and this, and I want to have my cake and eat it too. Well, that's my mentality. My inner child's like, great, I want all of it now. I'm patient. I have surrender always to source. But she's mm. like, I, like yeah. let's get it going. There's got to be a better solution. There's got to be a way to architect another modality that can really help people through this a lot more smoothly. So you embarked on making a compression algorithm for taking the dust and the tar off of the gems faster, more effectively, helping people shine more effectively. Exactly. I noticed that usually when I went to a healer, like they can, like they clear one lifetime at a time, or two, or three, or four, but not really. Like some, some really, really good ones can do uh, a really high level amount of them. And so I, I was like, well, what if we could do hundreds? And I need to ask a question on behalf of hopefully others as well. Is, is the idea that uh, w some, literally if our ancestors, our parents and their parents and yeah. whatnot, if they don't clean the dust and tar off yeah. of their gems yeah. and they don't shine their gems most fully into the world, yeah. And if it's still caked on when they give birth to us, yeah. then that is caked, those somewhat similarities are caked on to us and that's this multi, yeah. is that what this ancestral part of ancestral, ancestral lineage? Image? It's also partly timelines as in like other times yeah. that I came in. Yeah, in, it's, so there's, there's ancestral wounding that's, that's going through your bloodline lineages, right? So that's ancestral uh, wounding. And then there's also just past lifetimes where you were other people. You were still you, your essence, but you might have been a girl. Yeah. You might have been a geisha. You might have been someone in the Civil War. You might have been Prince Albert, you know? Like you were all these different beings playing out all these different stories, growing, uh, collecting karma. Collecting karma, and that can, and when you collect karma, it can go good or yeah, bad. Yeah, so there's a negative and a positive karmic bank account. And so when you are in, ac uh, when you are in reaction, when you are reacting, you're creating a lot more negative timelines. What does that mean, negative timelines? Negative meaning not bad, meaning not your most desirable, meaning you're gonna get a lot more lessons that can intensify until you have to move through it. And that's why people have intense car accidents. That's why really intense stuff happens to people because the universe, your mirror, is trying to wake you up out of your loop that you can't see past and that's why those lessons keep getting harder and harder and harder until you wake up. Maybe you shouldn't be dating that girl. Maybe that person's bad for you. So it's going to get so bad to the point of she betrays you or you get in a, a really bad accident. Like things can really, really, things can get really, really intense or you have that job, you're supposed to leave that job and that job's not good for you. It's not good for your essence, not good for your soul. You're going to get a lesson one way or another. And we do. So if we don't pay attention, we don't listen, we're going to create that. So going back to the karmic story. So how do you not create negative karma? By not being neutral, having a still mind. And when you are not in reaction, you're creating. And most people are in reaction instead of in creation mode. And when you are in full creation mode and stillness, and when you can will your reality without attachment, mm without attachment is, mm. it's the key. Yeah. You know, and when you're spelling from your heart, yeah. you're creating beautiful timelines for yourself. You know, that means your, your desired life purpose. Maybe you have a beloved, maybe you want to be alone, maybe you're a world traveler, you, maybe you get to, you know. We can do both. So we can do, this is kind of the, one of the points of meditation is to be able to take that pause in heavy, in chaotic moments. Yeah. And, and then act after that. So yeah, and this then, is where we're going to get into, uh, we're going to talk about trigger surfing. 
Okay, you want to do this now? Okay, let's do that now. And just one more thing, uh, just for again for those that um, I want to share this yep. with. We talk a lot about these hundred billion or so humans that have come yeah. and built this world that we live in, right? And it, it's sometimes it's hard because a lot of people think that consciousness is an emergent property um, from just this like physical rock, and it's not. You know, it's, science is still building up the tool sets to be able to like poke at the hypothesis <laughs> that we come from source as spirit to m make with the body this expression, and then we go back and yeah. come back in. So, you know, sometimes, yeah. So I just wanted to say that because you know these are still yeah. school thought. So sometimes people can come in once sometimes people come in a hundred times throughout the history of this oh, planet oh i mean and so many beings are so ancient thousands of lifetimes thousands of lifetimes, and these are like lessons like earth is like a school it is and we're like learning the lesson of what it's like to grow up um without parents or within low income or high income and all these issues that come with all of different right. birthplaces around the world the issues okay yeah we okay. all choose and we're all choosing that we're, we're like choosing those yeah, we're lessons choosing that time. you know like I'm choosing to have a twin flame relationship, a beloved partner that's going to um, poke at me in every single way and trigger me in every single way and that's going to help me grow. Yeah. And the Whoa. only way for me to get to this level is I need this kind of a partnership or I need that kind of a mom that's not showing up for me or I need this type of a limitation or I need to be in jail for 20 years to learn compassion and patience. Damn. Whoa. Yeah. You know, and there's beings that are coming in just to learn what it's like to be dark and come, some are just to be light. But at the same time, their souls get stuck in a karmic wheel, too. So they also have free will. So it's, it's more complex than I'm just going to play a role and everyone gets it. Like when everyone leaves, they just kind of get away with it. There's a, there's a little bit deeper than that. So. Okay. So, <laughs> yes. Okay. So now um, trigger surfing, and then we'll do the golden codes explanation. Okay. Yes. 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 Because yes. you mentioned this with the twin flame, um, like this soulmate style thinking that you're kind of like if you if you identify what someone's if you can really work with someone yeah. you can like identify what triggers are and help poke in a sense at them to like well, if the other person can meditate yeah. as their triggers are being poked. And they can like level themselves up. Like it's harder than it looks, and yeah. harder than it's like. Literally, I could probably write a curriculum right now, and I'd probably still fail. <laughs> so I'm doing pretty good, but like I'm just saying, like especially when it comes to twin flames, I don't think anything can poke you more than the twin flame. That's why they're called flames. And then this can also <laughs> this can be non um, non uh, sexual as well. This can be uh, oh yeah like partnerships and endeavors. Ex of course, and like you can work together for months or years Sorry. or whatever, and then learn those lessons that you need. Yeah. Relationships is the fastest way to grow. It's the, we're all each other's mirror, and the only thing that we're really being poked by is ourselves. Mm. It's not the other person really poking you. Poking. I'm attracting yeah. my own poking. I'm attracting <laughs> that. There's something in me that has a resonance that's like, hi, I'm resonance 3452. And that person's like, 3452, 345. I'm like, why is this asshole poking me? Yeah. It's like, oh, because there's a resonance match and to that, that frequency. That's, and that's a lesson that you, 3452 is a lesson that you are here to learn. Yeah. To, to overcome that trigger, to level your character up past. <laughs> it's a video game. This whole ascension thing is a video game. That's what we're here, you know, to do. We're, we started at base level, started, we're at 3D, we're trying to pierce up right? We're trying to pierce up out of our constricted reality of our human limitations that we think are real in this holographic prism. We call it a prison, but it's really a prism. <laughs> How do you surf the triggers? And then the oh, yes, yes. Says. Okay, so trigger surfing. First, um, how do you face something that you know is going to be really difficult? You know, how do you know? Like, for instance, let's say I wanted to go to uh, a high school reunion and I have tons of trauma and I've been bullied and my ex-boyfriend who dumped me was there or maybe I had, you know, I didn't look good and maybe I slept with my teacher. Who knows? Like, whatever, <laughs> whatever the story is, I'm like, no, I don't want to go back there. I'm never going back. And my inner child's super freaked out. She's just like, no, I'm not going 
coming back. And I'm like, okay, okay, well, okay, so what's your inner child's name? Uh, Atlas. Atlas. Okay, yeah. so let's, let's, well, let's, let's ask Atlas to come in right now. Okay. Hi, Atlas. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Sandy. Listen, I know you had a really, really, really intense upbringing and your high school reunion is coming up in two weeks. How do you feel like about going? So if you were a master, you would say, I'm fucking pumped to go to my reunion. Yeah. Yeah. And, but if you're scared and wounded, your inner child's like, I don't know, mm. like contracted. I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's make a game out of this. Like, you ready? Like, if, mm -hmm. if, we, if you gamify trigger surfing, like if you're about to surf those waters that you don't want to dive back into because that wave once overtook you, you're uh -huh. going to tell your inner child, yo, get your surfboard. Uh -huh. Let's go surfing. Like, let's go to the store. We're going to get some surfing clothes. What's your favorite colors? You start like pimping out his gear, where you pimp out his little avatar, you get him super stoked to be like, okay, yep, that kid poked, uh, he, he might, he poked at you before, but guess who you are now? Look how beautiful you are. Like, let's show how strong we are and how much we've learned. Yes. I was like, right, yeah, the path might go here. It might go like that. Your feelings, you might feel things. Things are going to come up and guess what? We're going to move right through. And before you know it, your inner child's just like, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm getting pumped. So you gamify it, create some kind of custom game to be able to go through the system. Before you know it, you're just riding right through. Riding right through. If I prepped myself like that, just get yourself pumped, like, all right, we're gonna gamify this, we're gonna have fun. If we gamified to everything, mm -hmm. it would be so much more fun. We can learn, we can move through. But when everything's so serious and you can get, it's just like a little bit intimidating. And intimidating is something that like the inner child feels and the inner child is in charge of a lot of our decisions and a lot of our follow throughs, believe it or not. My inner child's actually in charge of all of my magic. I'm just the limo driver. I just drive this lady around, okay. this little young girl, she just makes all the magic happen. Okay, so okay. imagine a trigger comes at you. Boom, ouch. Oh, that doesn't feel good. That's bringing me anxiety. I have a lot of fight or flight coming up. I'm starting to sweat. I'm starting to get really angry. I, ha I have this like energy. I just need to blurt out and react. Okay, so remember what I said about karma. You are, when you're into reaction, you can create negative karma. Mm. And when you are in neutrality, you create actually positive timelines, right? Mm. Okay, so here's an exercise. Option A. Imagine this like a little iPad, like a little holographic iPad. It's like brrr, option A, react, mm -hmm. play victim, <laughs> have a hissy fit, you know, whatever it is that you would do. It's like, okay, yeah, I want to pick that one because that's what I'm really in resonance with right now. It's like, okay, cool. How about a little bit of more information? Click on that. It's like, what happens if you click A? Oh, creating negative timelines. No, no, I don't, I don't, I'm not really in resonance with that. Okay, what's option B? Uh, sweep it under the rug and pretend it didn't happen. Oh, no, that's just suppressing it, and that's just going to create other, other issues. So you look under that, and you see, see, see the fallbacks of that. Okay, option C. See the beauty in the situation. See how you created your own reality. See what a master you are at creating this beautiful orchestration. And you know what, even if you don't believe that in the moment, because you probably won't, because you're still in fight or flight and that energy is still rushing through you, it doesn't matter, click on it. Fake it till you make it. Click on it and stick with it, just don't react. You're gonna have to, and, and after you click that, don't make any more reactions or anything, like I'm actually gonna come back to this later. You breathe, you walk away from the situation, you come back later and see what you clicked on. Mm. You check it out, you'll be super proud of yourself. You'll be like, ha! Huh, I walked away from something that could have really created some negative timelines for myself. And I'm so happy I passed the test. It was not easy, but I did it. Mm. And so that's how you trigger surf. And at first it's a little bit inorganic, a little bit technical. And after a while it just becomes like first nature. I like your metaphor of the little decision <laughs> screen appears and then you can view at the different options. Yeah. And that's what I'm sure we'll be talking to Joyce about a bit as well. Yeah. That, that gamification of those bifurcating moments in our trajectory have, like you said, karmic effects, they have timeline effects, all these yeah. types of things. And uh, to treat it more like a game where we're choosing the option that is 
most aligned with our North Star and our creative expression is, is huge. Okay, so we can do that for all these triggers, all these yeah. blocks for our gem, we can do this process. Yeah, you just demystify the charge. So if you're feeling a charge and you're like, man, that guy, that, that guy completely cut me off on the road and he gave me the finger and I just feel super like angry and triggered. And if you actually just sit with yourself for a moment and feel the root of the trigger, is it really him or her? Why am I so angry? What is the root of this anger? And once you were like, oh shoot, you know what? I just have this anger. I just actually have a lack of patience. Or I don't like it when someone else has the last word. Or I don't like it when A, B, and C happens. And I'm like, okay, well that's my shit. So that little character appeared in the game to test is like a test of faith 100. For, for you to, to learn and grow. We're all yeah. doing that simultaneously for each other. Damn, that's I'm the nuts. main character of my own movie yeah. and you're helping me grow. And you're the main yeah. character of your own movie, movie, vice versa. Vice versa. Yeah. Yeah, eight billion of us. In, is nature is at play too? The, like animals and... Oh, uh, there, all, so we're all, all of God's the, creation. There's All of God's creation is, is, is at play uh, doing the... Uh, these like little tests and whatnot for each other. Okay, that's right, the geometry. Let's... That that that's how I see what God is. God is that architecture yes. that is constantly all playing itself out in the one. That's how I. That's how we see that we're all connected in one yes. in that way. Yes. Okay. Now, taking the different modalities of that you learned in this Rolodex and applying it to a compression algorithm of golden coats to let that so, diamond shine. I didn't necessarily um, take a bunch of other people's modalities. I took a lot of reference points. Reference points. Reference okay. points, I, pretty much the world has been my muse. And uh, colors and textures and even watching the, you know, the way hospitals work and everything, just movies and stories. All of these are references of information of how things work in this world, right? So in the 3D. So for instance, if, I, if, if I'm going to do a healing on you and you were really sick, I would probably, I would tell Saint Germain to cook you up something and make you something. You're like, well, great, well, where's the thing? I'm like, no, I just, he just made it for you. And I gave you an IV of light and you're good. Well, that's a reference point from surgery or that's a reference point from getting a light blood transfusion. I could say it in, in millions of ways. It's just a creative way of asking source and all the different aspects of source to give me what we need for this situation to be taken care of. Okay, so then there's a process of you like synthesizing these different aspects yes, into yes. some sort of a beautiful creation that involves lights and scents and song and musical instruments and deep meditative practices that just unlock so much beauty <laughs> for me and for all the others that were participating and you do these so frequently so Thank yeah you. dive us deeper into the depth so of yeah well the golden codes is um as, as he said a, a healing and ascension technology it is broken up into three parts initially um, the first is the cosmic cleanup, which is going through all of your core wounds, all of the um, unnecessary frequencies and energies that are in your field holding your human limitations in place. Human limitations meaning your human limitations, your constrictions, your lack, your not enoughness, all of it, your, the separation, the, the sadness, the tension, all of that. The what we think is real, but it's not enough, all of that. It, that can all be shifted, recoded, recode your reality and activate your gold print is the point. Is to recode the reality that has been coded by some energies and forces that I won't mention at this time to keep us asleep. Mm. And the purpose is for all of us to wake up or mm. for those who are ready even more importantly. Mm. And so what does that mean when we're asleep? Well, we have so many programs in us that have kept our DNA dormant, that have kept our consciousness filled with a lot of undivine programming, undivine programming from movies and TVs and music shows and uh, you're not enough from your parents or your school teacher and whatever, the government, just life, human stuff, right? The dark ages goes on and on and on. All of that to, to 
keep separation constantly. When humans are separated, then they're in fear. And when they're in fear, you can monetize off of that. So that's an energy source. So how do, what do we do with that? What do we do when that is the greatest threat to, to life right now is you free it, unprogram it, and bring in the true codes that everyone do, does have. We all have those high wisdom codes. We all, a lot of us are such amazing star beings that are multi-dimensional avatars with, like, you don't have to be a healer to be an avatar. You don't have to be a, a healer to have superpowers. Like, everyone can have that. Everyone is that special. And I'm here to remind all of us of that. And, help out and not just it. remind, but also get to it. Yeah. To so, um, so the cosmic cleanup do, is goes into um, the Akashic records and the halls of Amenti, uh, miasmic records, hidden portals and pocket realms, and all sorts of templates. So it goes into all of your libraries of information that hold all of your footprints from past, future, and present lifetimes that hold all of those human limitations in place. <laughs> Swipe them clean of what is allowed to be removed at the time according to um, uh, the, the, the karmic law, you know? Because, uh, you know, what can be removed today can't be removed tomorrow. Da, 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 da. So after that, then we're moving into the second phase. The second phase is the multidimensional filtration system that is protecting your field from other frequencies that shouldn't be looking into your field, okay? That's gonna be protecting you uh, on some level because I can't, say any hundred percents on the show from 5G frequencies, from radioactive fr frequencies, um, and from energies that have been taken out for them to come back in. So you just, it's a protection shield initially. It's just very, very multifaceted. So after that has been done, then we're going to the light body activations. This is the fun part. The golden codes, right? So the Cathara grid, the golden ascending the ascending spiral frequencies to ascend our consciousness, ascend our DNA, all of that comes in. So it's a lot of new geometries that come in. It's the geometries of the golden age, the golden age that is amongst us. And those are geometries that are dispensating right now, on, right now to the planet, waking up, our plant life's gonna be changing, our water's gonna be changing. The DNA of everything is upgrading on this planet has the ability to that and we have to to be able to uh, be in resonance with the frequency that the earth is actually rising to which is why there's a lot of intensity happening at the same time there's gonna be a lot of shake off too so it's good to get with the program now after that then we're gonna get into some brain rewiring negative subconscious reprogramming but there's so much to do there and then you're making room for the bodhisattvic mind dispensations higher mind dispensations after the higher mind dispensations and brain infusions and doing energetic ozone treatments into your body, energetically only speaking, then we're going into a triple heart activation. Um, we're doing full chakra activation, expansion, harmonization, revitalization. We're doing regridding. We're doing many angelic dispensations. Um, so on and so forth. It, it, the, the list is very, very long. It's pretty much like a book, book long and it keeps growing. So uh, how do we do golden codes? I'm like, how, why, how can we do it in such a short period of time? Because there are libraries of information yeah. all put into one quote. Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quantum magic. Yeah. You know, it's all, it's all intention. There's so much light and so much uh, information and information is in these different geometries of light and these geometries of light hold a certain imprint of what how it can affect us and change the biocircuitry of our system to be able to operate in a different way and hold more light and have more resonance with other things that have resonance and you see how everything connects in that way and so then, you know, we're grounding you down to the crystalline core of the earth and connecting you deeper to your guides, doing third eye activations and heart, you know, different activations depending on what you need. So we do, um, we meaning, uh, there's also, uh, b besides that I have a team of angelics, my beloved Joyous also um, assists with golden codes in, in the most beautiful manner and we do all the events together. And he's just been such a joy to work with. And... Um, yeah, just it's it's been uh, the events have been incredible. That has been my greatest joy. I love personal sessions. I would say 
um, the events is where I can actually, I, I speak in light language and I sing in light language. And this is where I can also play with other healers and mm. other sound technicians, other uh, sound healers that are just have so much to bring. And then I can play with them. Someone else brings some, an element and then I have a pretty, what, what, goal, what makes Golden Code so easy to show up at events is that I have a script. And the script, no matter what, I have an hour long or I could do a 30 minute or a 90 minute. And so it's so much easier to play with others. And people close their eyes, they lie down, and I shut off their mind. Because you're put under anesthesia, energetically speaking. Which is all just high frequency, uh, a high frequency euphoric state that you, you step into. You feel just held. Held and loved and fully taken care of. And no one purges, no one goes through any negative side effects of any kind. It's just like really, really, really sweet. And it's so much joy. I find, find just as much joy in this as I do in any other playful activity, or maybe the most, besides spending time with my children. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's a lot. There's a lot of information. I could probably sit here for like hours Whoa. and days and years <clears throat> going on and on and on. There's so many different fractal ways we can uh, talk and break things apart and look at it. Um, there's a lot to cover. So wherever you yeah. want to drive. Whoa. So the importance of activating people faster and, uh, yeah. and just taking all of the different areas of study that you've taken from that make the process so it's not just like a yeah, activation. It's like a, I've learned a ridiculous amount of information. I've incorporated it into novel ways yeah. that I'm very aligned with higher yeah. powers to do. Yeah, people can't just sign on and like try to do a golden codes. Even if I gave them the script and they're like, okay, you do it now. Like you, yeah, yeah. it's something you have to earn over time. And it's not like it, I, had to, I had to go through my initiations to do that. And um, w what I would love to offer those who do want to learn about this type of healing, this type of next level quantum healing, because there's, there's a lot of quantum healers and um, they're all really, really amazing. But what I want to teach people is how to create their own modalities, is to be their own modality and be their own guru and their own mentor. So there's l l golden codes that exist now. There could be, you know, like a light codes or an ascension codes or whatever you want to call these different modalities that people would train themselves on helping awaken others and activate others. There's some fundamental life. things that need to be taken care of first. First is building their relationship with, so with source and the spirit and cleaning and purifying their vessels. It's a lot of purification. I'm all about purification and integrity. So like one thing about my work you'll know is that I'm very thorough and I'm very clean. And, um, and I hold a very, very sacred container always. And so um, I, I would take it seriously if I took anyone under my wing that was learning anything and making sure that before they get, like no one's allowed to get a new Spider-Man suit until they've freaking earned it. And that means me too. Mm -hmm. I'm still earning new stars all the time, constantly. Yeah. yeah and in different levels, and I will always be. Even Source is growing every day. Even the Ascended Masters and all the Angelics and all the star beings are upgrading constantly, and they're constantly getting initiated to new realms of higher consciousness, not just as humans. I, I love how you're explaining it in the sense that, like, you you got to earn your accolades and your experience points and your build yeah. your skill sets up um, before being able to like take on big um, in yeah to do something like this there's so much still to unpack on just the it's subject a big responsibility i want i want to give people um, a little bit of an idea on like if you know you got one coming up here in the bay area on friday and mm. there's going to be more that come up um, around this is mostly United States or it goes around at this time at this time and then what you know what then what then would someone that is you know either coming in to to experience this what would you then say that like they can help get what they need cleared in order to help themselves to help activate themselves that's that's pretty much 
If that's what they're looking for, yes, that's what I would so say. So people come in looking for different. Yes, so what happens is when a person comes into the event, we have quite a few different facilitators. There's other hands-on touch healers and people with tuning forts and people doing singing bowls. Everyone has like a different mastery. Mm. And I'm kind of like an orchestrator. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I interview everyone who comes in and I ask them what they want to release and what they want to call in. Yeah, I remember you doing that. Right, so we focus on their intentions. And your intention will, will be focused on and a lot more than that but it's just making sure that that has its focus. Because we're gonna be working on all the core wounds, but making sure that that one is also primarily like that we're not gonna miss that. It's really, really important. Maybe you wanna call in some, I mean, there's been some interesting, we've had some amazing events. Some people break out in orgasms, some people break out, I, I mean, we've had ones where there was groups of people having orgasms, just simultaneously all together and I was like that's really interesting it's not like I touched them or did anything to their uh, lower chakras to stimulate that or maybe I did I don't know um, some people just like burst out in laughter some people find their higher self and remember their purpose mm. Mm. some people just really relax and they fall asleep and they wake up and then all of a sudden weeks later they're like okay something's different um, those limitations are not, or I'm moving to another country, or I have to do this, mm -hmm. or I'm mm -hmm. not this person anymore. It's different for everyone. Yeah. Well, what a, yeah, diverse, <laughs> yeah, a list of different trajectories that people take either, yeah, during Depends experiences what you're ready or for. afterwards. Yeah. It's good that you come, you, you do ask that, that, what is their intent? What What is their intent to both eliminate and Obtain yeah, I want to make sure everyone feels held and has that special attention. Um, and we, you know, we, we have mi different types of events that have different frequencies and energies and libations that we do provide. And we have um, um, also provide private sessions afterwards. Um, for higher tiers if people want to work through things even one-on-one -on -one. so I'll work for hours after and have a special other sacred space and we'll go deep and you know that's like having two big sessions in one night that's a lot of shifting that's a lot of timelines it's not a small it's not a small session it's not it's a it's a big deal for your field it's a big deal for your field. That's okay. A lot. For those that can't attend Golden Codes on Friday, or maybe a nearby event to them in the future, they're around the world, wherever, whatever, wherever they're watching yeah. from, listening from. What is a core principle that people could embody? We talked about so many things of how to take some dust or tar off of this beautiful gem, and how to have it shine brightly and express itself creatively. What could be maybe a couple core principles that? you could advise people on? Um, principles when they walk away from the event? Principles or when for if they're unable to attend a Golden Codes event because they're around the world or what, what not. What can they do if they can't get Golden Codes? Yeah, what, well, what can they do to better kind of, yeah, to, to, yeah, if they can't get Golden Codes, but if they also just, if they maybe feel the things that you're talking about yeah. and they've maybe heard some of the recommendations yeah. like that pause, like that optionality. Yeah, like that is the most up. important thing because Golden Codes is not the only way to ascend your consciousness. It is a really, it's a golden elevator is what it is. I mean, there's tons of ways to ascend your consciousness through, their, there's yogis, through their breath work, there's people who just meditate a lot and all of a sudden, if when you stop thinking negative thoughts for a very, very long time, you're in neutrality, right? When you're in neutrality, a lot of those negative timelines melt away. A lot of people burn off negative timelines through having intense experiences and initiations. There's all sorts of things, ways to do that. And they all might take different levels of time. Now, yes, that trigger surfing, what it comes down to is having a neutral, still mind. And being in your heart is the number one thing. It's really, really simple is um, treating everyone with the highest level of respect, mm. um, having a high level of discernment, but not judgment. Judgment creates negative timelines as well. And there's a fine, level, a fine line, especially in, uh, in a lot of communities that I'm aware of that don't really know the difference between judgment and discernment. But 
it's easy to cross that line. So it's easy to create negative timelines based on where you're at as well. So it's really important, meditation, having a still mind, gamifying your experience yes. every single day, yes. being able to catch when you're about to get fiery or you're about to explode, or you're about to get on the phone with your mom and your mom's gonna ask you that stupid question she constantly asks you and that triggers you. Okay, that is your playing ground. That's your video game playing ground right now. To stay calm. And that every test, you're like, oh shoot, I'm being tested. Every test is an opportunity. Yeah. And that opportunity is to get through that other level of this video game. So that the only way you're gonna ascend is by passing those tests. Yeah, so pass tests, collect accolades, skill points, yeah. build up your experience points. Yeah. And, and you're gonna have tests. friends and peers that can help you along your way just like when you're playing a video game you're going to have a little yoshi you're going to have a little you have a what's his name luigi mm -hmm. you're going to yeah, have little yeah. sidekicks and guides and beings on this dimension and others depending on who you are and how you roll that are going to be here you're going to have tools in your tool belt maybe you're a tapper maybe you need to do yoga maybe you're a tantric master Maybe you need to like punch a punching bag, you know, like everyone's got like a different flavor on how to work through energy. But as long as you can still the mind and mm. not go into reaction and see the higher purpose in it and take responsibility for everything that happens to you, you're on, you're on point. Damn. Okay. Still mind, take responsibility for everything that happens to you. See it like a game that you leveling up. It's just, the game is a tool. You don't have to see it as a game. Okay. It's just, it's a it's recommendation. A it's a recommendation. It's a recommendation to get all the aspects of your consciousness on board to be able to maneuver through triggers. Yeah. And ascend your consciousness. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 I think that was, that was very solid. <laughs> Very solid synthesis, for, for, especially for those that are watching and or listening that are unable to um, to attend. Of course, I think, I think that was that was that was very solid. Um, wow. Okay. Also, personal sessions are available. Per, yeah, personal sessions. Also, I that's that's big to reach out goldencodes.love for those that want the yeah personal sessions. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, based in Southern California. At the moment. At the moment. So for those that. Um, are interested in California especially can easily um, access that mm -hmm. so okay there is there's something about what's happening is it exactly where it's supposed to be or did we venture off of the Dow are we on the exact course, the exact right place we're supposed to be? Collectively, consciously? Collectively, consciously. We're all exactly where we're meant to be. And it's like moment to moment, no matter what past we've picked or what future we're picking. We're all in our path, no matter what. And both individually, but collectively too. Mm -hmm. That every moment, no matter where things go, mm -hmm. it's exactly where it's supposed everything to be. Everything is perfect just as it should be. Everything's perfect just as it should be, especially with the all of the malevolent forces that are pressing right all up against it. the positive ones. All it's it. the most beautiful artistic expression when it's just like that. It's just a reflection of yourself. And, you know, we're taking full responsibility for all of it. And it's not easy to do that. And that's why this whole ascension thing is such a big deal and why so many ascended masters and gurus like Buddha, for instance, you know how many initiations that brother went through to be able to get to where he, like that was, that was tough. Are people coming in as fast as the lighthouses yeah. that you're talking about, yeah. like yourself yeah. that are doing these consciousness yeah. ascensions? Yeah. Are people coming in on the other side just as fast to try and... Oh, yeah. Yeah. What do you call those if they're not like a lighthouse? What, you know, what are the ones on the other side? Are they dark house? Vampires. It's just like an energy suck? Yeah, the... they, just, they, they just suck the energy. They're, they're trying to take. They're not trying to share and give. I mean, I don't go around and use that word a lot. It's not like in my lingo a lot, but it just came to mind came when you said mind, that. Yeah, yeah. It's just an energy that wants to take. So then... Parasitical. 
So like pantheism is is like all is God. That's you know pantheism is all is God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is then there is there is is there something beyond source or is it just all source well that would defeat the purpose of it being called source okay so it's all source okay there's nothing beyond source it's all source no one can prove that no it would be no one can prove it okay <laughs> and then and then from from source yeah then there is these these spirit to body entries onto different rocks or stars. Source is this game just playing out, right? Source is this beautiful this, architecture yes. game that's just playing out. And it once started off really simple. Let's just like make it a really simple story. It once started off really simple. And there were a lot of energies that were created with free wills and their own choices. And some storylines started playing out and there was different aspects and different personalities and tones and colors and everything's just playing itself out. And, you know, does God intervene? Yes, depending on your will. Okay, there's, there's so much to even say from there, but do we, uh, do we also go play on other rocks orbiting stars in this galaxy and other galaxies and other universes? What do you mean? Is, is this specific iteration of a rock called Earth yeah. orbiting a star yeah. called our sun, yeah. is this the most important one or just one of many it important is, ones? Um, it's a really popular one. It's, um, it's a really sought out, a sought out after one. There are other planets that have beings that look like us. Earth particularly, I know it's intense, it feels like a nut house, is the one that has a really long VIP list. And there's a lot of beings that are trying to incarnate and they're trying to come here. I know we're like, are you kidding? Just, just go to Pallades. Like, yeah, you don't want to come here, right? But it's, it's, a, it's a planet that a lot of beings are growing so much exponentially. There is so much rich, richness in that, the, the treasure in that. There's, it's hard for okay. us to even wrap our minds around because we're like, okay, man, like this is kind of okay. Lot. So, th so the nut house is the reason why there's a long VIP list because people want to come and level up because there's big challenges here to overcome and yeah, grow and support systems. There's a lot of beings that are that are have special coding and their coding are to be a mission to help the planet work. So it's like there's multiple stories playing out all at the same time. But yes, you're right to what you said. Whoa, it's so cool to think about just w where to incarnate and where what experiences to have and and mm -hmm. and some beings are almost done reincarnating here. Some are like, okay, I've done my work. This is my last. This is the last time. And a lot of beings right now There's are still a big trajectory for the future of this civilization that needs a lot of help. <laughs> it needs a lot of help. And there's a lot of beings who are like, I'm going to do it from up there. I'm going to, I'm going to work from home now. I don't need to come to the office anymore. And how anymore. do you work from home when you go? Oh, like uh, actually work from home? <laughs> yeah. How do you, how after you've come and done one interval with your heart on this rock, do you, can you go back or several intervals? How, how do you happen? finally go home? There's, there's after a cycle. You go home, how do you, how do you work from home? You know, how do you do that? Uh, Okay, how do I work from home from other planets or how do I work from home as a, as a multidimensional how you, healer? How do you work from home source? When well, because you're, you're guiding other beings here. Just like, let's say from I have source. my... Yeah, for instance, okay. if, I'm, if I'm being guided by Arcturians and they're chilling on Arcturus, having Arcturian Mai Tais, sipping on the beach, they're like, everything's purple and gloomy, just like your shirt, right? Mm -hmm. I'm chilling in that, on that planet right now. I'm just like, yeah, what's up? And then like, I get the ring, you're like, Hey, what up, Billy? What's going on? And Billy's like meditating. He's like, I'm getting in touch with my Arcturian guides. And then he's like, yeah, what up? Yep, yep, of course. Yeah, I, I, I can remove those uh, vampirics for you. No problem here. Awesome, cool. Yeah, I'll talk to you Wednesday. 
that's how you work from home. That so so there is <laughs> so there's within all that is there are a ridiculous amount of communications yeah. occurring. I mean, there was a funny example. There's so many beings, countless, that can be in many places at the same time, and there are home planets that your if as a star seed, you have a home planet somewhere, and those beings are helping you out right now. And there's also other planets that you have planet hopped around and you're connected with them too and they're helping you as well. And as multi-dimensional being, you can be in multiple dimensions as one, at once and be multiple beings at once and they can come in, work through you, work as you too. Some people have walk-ins and walk-ins are spirits that come through us and talk through us and work through us. Which is beautiful. So. Whoa! Yeah, we've Whoa. had plenty of stories now where people have shared where it feels <laughs> like that there was a walk-in that occurred, and then some trajectories went in different directions. Uh -huh. and, okay. Now, what, just quickly to us explain what what do you what is a star seed in a home planet? What is that? Yeah, a, a star seed is when you come from these other star, star lineages, there are star lineages, there's different star systems that hold these different codes. And they're different, some come from different universes and some are from this one. So you have like the Palladians, you have the Arcturians, you have the Lyrans, you have the, um, the Avians, and then you have the Aquifarians, and then you have the Andromedans, and then you have the um, you know, you have the crystalline star system, and it, it just goes on and on and on, the Syrians, and they come from different star systems, and they all have their different signature abilities, and they're all different aspects of source. They all have high, high source codes. They're very, very high frequency. Some are in the 40th dimension and up, and some are on the 8th dimension, some are in their 16th dimension, depending on where they're at. And they all hold different codes, like for instance, Arcturians are really amazing with technologies and uh, Palladians hold a lot of love codes and they're very, very affectionate and they have a lot of, um, their light body transmissions are super, super powerful and they're also, key, they, they hold the keys to a lot of wisdom, like a lot of wisdom keepers. And then the Andromedans are the architects and the Aquifarians is the water planet and all the water elemental frequencies and very, 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 very high frequencies. And then, like, there's a, there's a star system where a lot of the Christ energies came from. So a lot of the Christic energies comes from the crystal star systems, which is actually, it's a galaxy, it's a star system of a, a few different planets, and it's a lot of that intelligence that lives within there. And there's also something called the Mother Arc and the Father Arc, where the Divine Mother and the Divine Father reside, which is a whole other subject. Whoa. And that's really deep. The Divine Mother is actually many different uh, Divine Mothers like working in a cosmos of Divine Intelligence, working on our behalf, constantly rebirthing the universe. There's so many different universes within universes, but yeah, there's... And then, then you have the angelic realm, the celestial realms. I have so many questions that we will be able to unpack on another our next yeah. uh, conversation together on this yeah well, I think we've just done super awesomely unpacking who you are <laughs> and like what you represent golden codes i'm really proud um and you've 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 given me so many new ways to like see the world and also like conversationally wise like there's just so many directions to take this you're obviously extremely um studied on spirituality and synthesized I know some things well. yeah but yeah. I'm not I wouldn't call myself even like there's some people that really really have studied and have gone so deep book wise they're like oh well I went to like 80,000 workshops and read, read so many books I don't read I don't read books so I kind of just was influenced by my environments and I and I also channel and then I have my work checked just like a scientist does yeah yeah, that, that, that's, that's a critical component, too, mm. is that you, you have this uh, feedback loop that happens. How do you know when you're channeling that it's correct? How yeah, do you know yeah. when you're getting information that it's not just a bunch of mumbo-jumbo or false light programs? False light program is um, when you're channeling a being that is not what 
he or she or it says it is. And that can easily happen when your channel is not clear and when you have a lot of core wounding and programs inside of you, which is extremely common, actually the most common thing ever, and it's totally okay. So how do you know? So something that I practice is um, when I channel or something comes through and I'm like, wow, this is epic, amazing, feels really good. Awesome, I wanna get it checked out. Why? Because I'm responsible for a lot of lives. Yeah. I'm responsible for a lot of decision making. And if I don't check my work, if I don't check myself and I know better, then that's negative karmic repercussions for me. And how do you get your work checked? Is I have other psychics and healers and other people that are really amazing, world renowned at what they do. I have f maybe five to six to seven to eight, depending on what the situation is, have them all check. And if they're all saying yes, then I'm gonna go with that yes, because that's, stati that's statistics. Not only is it just statistics, that's source showing me yeah. yes, 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 because you're, you're reading the symbology. You can read, you don't have to be that kind of a psychic to read everything. You can read life, the way how everything shows up to you. God is constantly speaking to you and through you, through everything that happens to you. Here's a sign, here's a sign. So if I'm like, God, show me six signs, that this channel is accurate, I'm gonna get that sign. And, 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 and when I get that, that's great. So what, what happens if it's half yes and half no? That's a great question. Then don't act on it and, constant, and research further. Research and then that becomes, that's a, becomes a project. Becomes a project. That becomes a project. I put that in the project file. So my consciousness is like a desktop. Most of ours, we seem mm. to think of it that way. So if I have something that comes up and it's unresolved, it's not fully clear, which happens quite often being a human, I'm like, okay, I'm putting that under investigation. So I'm, I'm, what I do is I create a lot of stillness around it and I'll, especially around for three months, I'll watch it and I'll play with it and interact with it and see what comes up and see what, what within me, what shadow aspects within me are creating a lot of distortion and also how, are there any distortions in that? And I'm starting to see what adds up. You're starting to see what overcompensates and undercompensates. So it's, I read geometries energetically. I see and feel things on how they show up constantly. And so I'm just keeping track. I'm constantly keeping track and then the answers show up and then I get it checked mm. again mm -hmm. later on and then the answer is clean. Always, yeah. always, Whoa. always, always, always. Whoa, yeah. It's a big responsibility, it's a lot of work. It is, yeah, and it's important to be patient too. Very patient. Very patient, and also it, the, it's so, sometimes it can be difficult to, to tap into the reading of something as something that, you know, if you are being patient and putting it away and then maybe it's still like 50-50 and you're still waiting, it can be um, hard to read things as are they pro, are they against, are they neutral? So. Yeah, mm -hmm. but sometimes I know that it feels more clear with intuition. Sometimes it feels a little bit more foggy. Take it to be patient. Mm -hmm. Let's wrap on two questions. Mm. Are we in a simulation? Yes. Explain more. <laughs> I'm not going into any more explanations this evening. Okay. What is the most beautiful thing in the world? My children, my family, my relationships with my most precious, 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 innocent, sweet, wild, loving creatures that you know I called home. So my beloved, joyous, Angelina and Malachi that bring me so much spark in every single moment and I can't, uh, I can't even compare that to any rainbow and any activation or superhero power of any kind. That is, is just simple. It's, it's simple divine love. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Ooh. <laughs> you make so many uh, likely people that may not know that um, especially people that are super focused on memetics or spreading ideas around the world. They're not so focused on genetics and like procreation. 
likely making people more interested in like why are so many people saying that the most beautiful thing in the world is having children and like and seeing the love and the innocence and you have to experience it to really to know to know no actually sorry i didn't mean to create that limitation for you some people actually know some people have known for many lifetimes and if they just know but if you don't know and you experience it you will know but you know what some people are not necessarily cut out for that. They so may not have it's that not a one agreement in this. Yeah, or they're thing. having a tougher situation, maybe they're a single parent and it's tougher for them or they're maybe having the best single parent motherhood motherhood experience. Everyone's different. But all I have to say is that the experience of that is something that you can't put into words. You can't and the experience uh, of source and being alive is something really difficult to put into words. It's just life is such a miracle. And yeah. what makes it such a miracle is being fully present with it. Yeah. It's presence is, cre is, is actually what the miracle is. Otherwise, we're constantly analyzing it, trying to pick at it, trying to do all this stuff with it. And no matter what, life is happening, and it's always going to be evolving, and it's always going to be, the magic's still happening, no matter what you do and try to figure out with it. But having full presence as it's happening, and embodying that energy, and building that relationship with it in every single moment, and seeing the miracles in every mundane moment, mundane, that's the miracle. Yeah. When boredom can become a luxury, you know? It's everything, just like even just like walking down a street that's not so fond or eating. Imagine you were eating the same food every day. Can you possibly make it a different experience every single time? I have. I've actually tried that for a year. I've tried that for a year. I've like literally had the same meal like every single day when I, was, I became a raw foodist and I kept eating the same thing. And it was an orgasm every time and never tasted the same. And I went into this complete simplicity meditation. And I just kept finding new flavors and new ways to make love with the experience. Yeah. Which is another form of Tantra. I'm not necessarily mm. a Tantric mm -hmm. master, but I think that's what that is in new a way. New ways to make love with even the most mundane aspects of reality. Life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Sandy, we have so much more to talk about around you. I feel so damn enlightened. I appreciate you <laughs> so much. I love you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Thank, thank you. You. <sighs> you coming Friday? Yeah. We got you? For sure. And Ori, too. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Ori's got a mama's B day, but um, afterward, we'll see if he can uh, enjoy us. I think so. Like, Beautiful. wow. Ha! 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 Hoo! Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on this episode. This is definitely an episode to comment on and let us know what you're thinking. Also, do check out the links in the bio below to goldencodes.love as well as Sandy's Instagram profile. And have more conversations with your friends, your families, coworkers, people online about what we talked about in this episode. Um, Dust off that gem and have it shine so beautifully in the world and do the hacks along the way to you. Treat life like a game. All these types of things. Level up, level up, level up. Make it fun. Make it fun. <laughs> Shout out to Ori Shapiro for producing. Thank you very much, Ori. And also, go build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you soon. Ha, ha, ha.